Hey guys, and welcome to Wrestling Days. Uh, as you can tell, this is a slightly different looking video. Uh, the reason for that is because I always shoot my videos using my phone, and uh, it's got like a really good camera on it. Um, unfortunately, uh, I was at Raw last night, had a little bit too much to drink, and I have managed to lose my phone. Um, I think I've left it on the train coming back. It had the raw footage on it, so I'm really, you know, disappointed about that. Um, but in truth, I am paying for it. I feel absolutely terrible. Um, had you know a little bit too much to drink, and well, these things happen, you know. On onwards and upwards. Um, I will get a new phone sorted. We will get back to normal. But I didn't want you guys to miss out on any new videos just because I didn't have it. So. Please excuse, you know, the, the quality of this, but let's get stuck straight into Raw because I want to tell you a little bit about, you know, what I saw actually being at the show. Um, first thing was that they did Superstars um, and Big Show was the first person to come out. Uh, Big Show got a really, really good reception. No chance of Please Retire, uh, which was a little bizarre. Um, you know, he was smiling, waving to the crowd everyone seemed to be into him, to tell the truth. Um, I think the reason for this is because his position on the cards, you know, he's coming out on superstars, he's, he's not main eventing, he's not in any kind of real feuds, he doesn't appear to be standing in anybody's way. Um, you know, he, he, he serves a purpose, I suppose. He's still an attraction. You know, he is still the biggest uh, sports star uh, or biggest athlete in the world. So... Um, you know, it's he's a good person to see live, and he got a really good re response. It was just, you know, pretty no noteworthy. Um, he was going up against uh, Social Outcast. I think it was a handicap, actually. It wasn't announced as a handicap, but pretty much all three of them were in the ring at the time, at the same time. Um, and then we had Tyler Breeze going up against Kalisto. So, again, you know, that US title doesn't make it onto Raw. Um, so it was just on superstars. Um, really good matches. I won't give away the results because I don't think it's aired yet. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, it was it was decent. It was decent. Um, and then that that took us into Raw. Uh, Lillian Garcia came out and started singing "God Save the Queen," which I really wasn't into. I'm into the national anthem. Don't get me wrong, but um, I just I didn't need it at the start of Raw. I don't think she's ever done that before, and it's just a bit bizarre. Um, so she did that, which I don't think would have made the show. Um, and then obviously they, they're setting up the ring and, and it's got the Ambrose Asylum. So people, you know, know what's going to happen. Uh, we know that Ambrose is coming out. I thought this was a really solid opening segment. I thought there was a lot of big names involved. It was fantastic to see Shane. Um, I, I, I didn't expect it. Um, to tell the truth, I, I'm pleased with this roar. It was a really solid roar. Um, and I'm pleased with it because I just didn't know uh, how far they would go. Um, you know, London sometimes misses out on the bigger names uh, because they don't travel over the pond. You know, um, I can't remember the last time Raw had Undertaker um, or had Brock Lesnar. I don't think it's ever had a Brock Lesnar uh, or The Rock or, you know, we, we just don't get those kind of stars. So it was great for Shane uh, to come over um, and help kick this off. As I said, it, it was two matches that got set up for later in the night, but also we made two matches for Payback. And Payback is starting to look like a fantastic show. I really cannot wait for that. Um, I think Payback could be the best card of the year. Um, so... For payback, he's made uh, Owens against Sami Zayn, which, you know, it was going to happen sooner or later and mouth-watering, you know, absolutely can't wait for that. And then Jericho against Ambrose. Again, I'm all right with this. I think they're doing a really good job of building Jericho up at the moment. Uh, hopefully it's Ambrose that will get the better of that and he will pick up the victory. Um, you know, he needs to after that Brock Lesnar debacle. You know, he should have beaten Lesnar. But uh, for whatever reason, they, they didn't go that way. Um, so really, really solid start. Um, and for me, this is like three weeks now of, of Raw being decent. Um, and I don't know, every week I get more and more nervous that this is going to be the week that they'll drop the ball. And I was just so pleased that they didn't drop the ball. Was it spectacular? Was it groundbreaking? No, but I wasn't expecting it to be. Um, it, it 
overachieved against my uh, expectations. Um, so really, really pleased and a really good opener. Um, and the opening match was strong as well. You know, we get Jericho against Sami Zayn. I mean, these two can work. A um, couple of spots, you know, Jer um, Zayn went through the ropes on Jericho uh, and did his DDT thing, and he was, like, slapping the announce table. He was proper fired up. Um, Jericho picks up a cheap victory. Um, and, and you know, I, I'm absolutely fine with that. I, I think they should just keep building Jericho so that if, when Ambrose gets the better of him, uh, it'll just mean that little bit more. Um Sammy, yeah, uh, he you know he got cheated out of uh, a victory really, so it didn't really make him look any weaker. Um, you know, great little pop for uh, really both of these guys. Certainly, I popped when Jericho came out. I, I proper screamed because I did not expect Jericho to be there. Don't know why. Um, I don't know why I wasn't expecting it, but when his music hit at the uh, at the beginning, I, I, it took me by surprise. Um, so yeah, uh, brilliant opener and a really good opening match. Next up we had Enzo and Big Cass and the place went mental, absolutely mental. Um, not, not the best match that followed it, promo was all right, but just to be there and experience them coming out, it's, it's everything that you imagine. Um, the place was going absolutely mental, everyone scream, literally screaming along. Uh, with their, uh, you know, opening little bit that they always do. Can't teach that. Um, it's, it was brilliant. Uh, as I say, you know, the match that followed wasn't the best, but, you know, it set up a, a mouth-watering final. Um, and obviously we'll get to that in a bit. Uh, the crowd, you know, that really got the crowd going. And so it was Reigns up next and he felt the the heat. Um, he was horrifically booed, as I say. I don't know if this came across at home. Um, I know that uh, I've read a few sites saying that the crowd were a little bit quiet at times, but I think we got the message across that we're not Roman Reigns fans, um, and uh, yeah, it was it was it was pretty bad. Um, AJ Styles coming out was immense. Uh, again, the place was unglued. Um, that that entrance music is just phenomenal. I didn't see Gallows and Anderson jump in the ring. Uh, not initially, anyway. I saw the beat down, but uh, yeah, you know, again, wasn't expecting it. I just think this whole dynamic is just so intriguing. Um, you know, is Styles getting them to do this? Uh, I've got a horrible feeling that he is and that he'll turn heel. I don't think he'll win the title. I think that he'll lose, and then I think he'll beat Roman up after, and I think they'll try and turn him heel. And then that will be uh, the launch of Bullet Club. I don't think they'll call it Bullet Club. I think that we'll get Bala coming up uh, at some point, And then it will be Bala Club. They've already got the t-shirts printed, literally. So uh, why would they not run with that name? So I think that it will be revealed that Bala is actually the leader at some point this year. Ziggler came out next. And uh, the crowd just didn't seem to respond. Um... And it was a bit confusing because uh, after that we had Fandango come out and the crowd loved Fandangoing in London, right? So everyone's going mental Fandangoing. I hope that came across. Um, and uh, what's weird as well is when you're there, Fandango's entrance was on and then it all goes black whilst we go to commercial. And then they restart it all again. So it's not as if his music just continuously plays and then you lot go to commercial and then when you come back it's still playing. They turn it off in the arena um it all goes quiet and then it's like right we're coming back live turns it all back on and then we we're back again uh very bizarre but um so it felt in the arena and it felt to me like this was going to be Dolph Ziggler against Fandango but what I couldn't get my head around is why the Andre the Giant Memorial uh, trophy was at ringside and uh which I proper enjoyed seeing you know the real trophy uh that that was really cool um but I couldn't get my head around it and then Baron Corbin came out so I, I didn't know if this was triple threat or whatever. Obviously, it turns out Ziggler's just on commentary. Uh, and obviously, you don't hear the commentary when you're, when you're actually there. Uh, so didn't didn't know that. Um, but the match itself was, you know, nothing special. But I've got to be honest, it was brilliant to see Fandango on uh, Raw. You know, just mixing it up, something a little bit different. Next, you had The Miz and Maurice. And this was a, a good little segment. Uh, I think Maurice is doing a fantastic job since she's come back as, as Miz's manager. I think The Miz has always been great on the mic. Um, and I just think this feud's an interesting one, Cesaro against The Miz. 
Um, and Cesaro, I mean, maybe my favourite moment of the night was when he quoted Roddy Piper, and it was it was it was a good strong segment, and what it led into was even better because obviously uh, I was actually with um, a good friend of mine, Tadek, who uh, he doesn't tend to go to many wrestling shows, um, so it was it was real you know, honour for me to go along with him and, and explain a few things to him. And he's a massive, massive Rusev fan. Um, and so we both popped uh, when Rusev's music came out. And what was great about that is that Rusev's in the League of Nations. And so I thought if he was going to be there, that it would be the League of Nations music. So how fantastic for him to come out to his own music. Um, I just think he's better on his own. You know, he's, he's still he still could be a monster heel if they booked him right um he's not he's not a lost cause by any means um but yeah great moment obviously he comes down turns into uh, a four on four match and we get the new day and well uh, that that is the loudest pop enzo and Cass were up there but no doubt about it new day just uh, literally tore the o2 down um absolutely brilliant i mean they were selling everything as well outside there was two different t-shirts you could buy the box for five pounds on its own uh you could get the unicorn horns there was there was loads of stuff for the new day um so yeah you know the the, the place became unglued the match was all right i thought cesaro looked brilliant in it as he always does with his european uppercuts that he was doing next we had the only women's match of the night which was a real disappointment i wanted to see at least two, um, but we just got this another big, I think it was five on five or four on four. Um, Paige just looked lost. I uh, really don't know what's going on with her at the moment. Um, you know, she, this was London. The, the place should have gone mental for her and she should have picked up a big victory, but um, I don't know, it just didn't, didn't click for whatever reason. Um, it was it was all right, you know. I suppose the story in this is Charlotte Natalia, and the big big news being that Natalia is going to have the Hitman in her corner at Payback, which is absolutely mouthwatering. Um, next we had the Vaud Villains. Um, I popped for these big time. I'm a massive Vaud Villains fan, um, so uh, they won their match, and they're now in the final against Enzo and Big Cass. Winner goes to face New Day. I really want the Vaud Villains to win this tournament. I just think they need it more. Who's was up next? I like the fact that they made a deal out of this. You know, if he lost the match, he was going to have to join the Social Outcasts. I thought it was interesting as well. I don't know if it aired, but I think it was Curtis Axel actually mentions about Adam Rose getting suspended, um, which I thought was a little risky on his part, but um, fun all the same. Obviously, Cruz wins, um, and so he doesn't have to join them. But, uh, yeah, I'd say this is probably the lowest point of the uh, card for me, but I was I was all right with it still. I was still pretty entertained. Main event time, and it was KO against uh, Dean Ambrose. And I've got to be honest, I, I've seen reports saying the crowd are quiet. I was spent by this point. The show had been really solid, really entertaining. I'd done loads of cheering. I was a little bit drunk. I was out. I know that uh, Ambrose picked up the victory with Dirty Deeds. Uh, the reviews I've seen have, have said that it was all right. Um, I suppose it was just a bit of a, I don't know, a, a flat way to end Raw. I mean, that's not really fair. It's not their fault. Dark match after was uh, what I feared we were going to have as the main event. As soon as I saw the opening segment and all them four guys, I thought tag match um thankfully we didn't get that but it was the dark match so the dark match was ambrose and um sammy Zayn against kevin owens and uh chris jericho and it was fun uh it wasn't on for that long uh eight minutes or so um and uh well honestly i can't i can't even remember i was i was completely gone by this point um so I think the faces won. I thought this was a solid show. I think payback looks immense. Really excited for that. And uh, yeah, hopefully they can just keep this kind of momentum rolling, keep this going. Cool. Um, don't forget you can follow me on Twitter at Wrestling Days UK. And if you haven't subscribed, it'd be brilliant if you did. Cool. Thanks a lot for watching. I really appreciate it. I'm going off now to... Uh, pass out somewhere. Bye for now.